Welcome! In this video, we're going to talk about non-mutually exclusive events. We're first going to learn to determine what makes events non-mutually exclusive. Then we will represent these events using Venn diagrams. And finally, we will learn to calculate the probability of non-mutually exclusive events using the principle of inclusion and exclusion. When we have a set of events that can occur simultaneously, we describe them as being non-mutually exclusive. That means that when I represent the favorable outcomes on a Venn diagram, these sets are going to intersect. That means that they've got favorable outcomes in common. When we calculate the probability of non-mutually exclusive events, we must implement what's called the principle of inclusion and exclusion. Essentially, that means that we have to be sure not to count the favorable outcomes that they have in common twice. So this is what the equation that we'll use for non-mutually exclusive events looks like. You'll notice that I'm still calculating the probability of event A or event B, and I'm still going to add the probability of event A and the probability of event B. So the last part of this equation is the part that's new. So this part represents the probability of event A and event B. Okay, so that's the intersection, the outcomes that they have in common. This is, ensures that I'm not including the favorable outcomes that they have in common more than once. Now again, just remember that when we're calculating probabilities, we are including ratios or we're using percentages or decimals that compare the number of favorable outcomes to the total number of the outcomes for that event. Okay, let's dig into our first example. It says, in a school newspaper, the recent results of a survey are published. And you can see these results here um, in this photo. It says 62% of students skip breakfast, 24% skip lunch, and 22% eat both breakfast and lunch. So that means that they are skipping neither breakfast nor lunch. Let's take a look at what the question is asking us to find. So the first part wants to know whether or not these are mutually exclusive events. And then that's going to help us tackle part B and C. So B wants to know the probability that a randomly selected student skips at least one of breakfast or lunch. And then part C says determine the probability that a randomly selected student skipped breakfast but not lunch. Okay, so let's start by determining whether or not these events are mutually exclusive. If I take a look at this data and I was to add up each of these percentages, so 62% plus 24% plus 22%, I know that that's, that adds up to more than 100%. It's a total of 110%. That means that there must be students who are skipping both breakfast and lunch, and there's an intersection there. That tells us that these events are non-mutually exclusive. So there are students who are skipping both breakfast and lunch. Let's set up a Venn diagram to help us organize all of this information. Let's label B as the favorable outcomes for the event of skipping breakfast. And then we'll use the label L to represent the favorable outcomes of skipping lunch. So we can fill in that we know that the probability of skipping breakfast is 62%, which means that there are 62 out of 100 possible outcomes that were favorable for skipping breakfast. Okay, so we can put our 62 in there to represent the favorable outcomes. And then it says the probability of skipping lunch was 24%. So that means that 24 out of 100 possible outcomes were favorable to skipping lunch. Now, remember, there's 22 
percent of the students that ate both breakfast and lunch, which means that they neither skipped lunch nor did they skip breakfast. And so these 22 outcomes will be on the outside of events B and L. So I'll place them there in my Venn diagram. So part B is asking us to determine the probability that a randomly selected student skips at least breakfast or lunch. Now, the part of this Venn diagram that represents the students who skip one or the other or both are the favorable outcomes that are found inside our two sets. Now, we know how many students um, skip neither, so we can use that information for us to figure out the probability of skipping at least breakfast or lunch. So, we know if we take our 100% of students and we subtract the 22% of them that eat both breakfast and lunch, that tells us that 78% of them skip at least one of breakfast or lunch or both because we know that these are non-mutually exclusive events. Now, part B is asking us to determine the probability of a student selected skipping breakfast and not lunch. So that is this area on our Venn diagram here. So they only skip breakfast. Now we know the total probability of a student skipping breakfast, but we don't know this little probability of the intersection or the probability that they've selected or skipped both breakfast and lunch. So we can use our little equation that we talked about previously to help us figure out this intersection. So we know that the probability of skipping breakfast or lunch is equal to the probability of event B plus the probability of event L. Subtract that intersection. So we just determined that 78% of the students skip breakfast, at least breakfast or lunch. So I'm going to write that as a decimal, 0.78, and I'm going to plug that in for um, the left-hand side of our equation. And I know that 62% of students in total skip breakfast, so I'm going to put in my 0.62 for the P of B. And we know that the probability of skipping lunch in total is 0.24. And I'm trying to figure out or determine what this intersection is. So I'm going to leave that section in my equation. I'm going to start by just simplifying the right-hand side by adding up those two values. And if I rearrange and solve my equation, I can see that the probability of skipping both breakfast and lunch is going to be 0 0.08, or that's 8%. Now, that's not what the question asked us. It wanted to know the probability of a student um, skipping breakfast, but not lunch. So I represent that by saying the probability of breakfast and then I use a backslash that means but not lunch. And so I know in total 0.62 or 62% of the students skip breakfast, but now I know that 8% of them skip both breakfast and lunch. And so if I subtract those two, that'll leave me with 54% of the students um, that skip only breakfast. Alrighty, let's squeeze in one more example here. It says, a car manufacturer keeps a database of all the cars that are available for sale um, at all of the dealerships in Western Canada. So for model A, the database reports that 43% have heated leather seats and 36% have a sunroof. And even further, 49% have neither. Um, heated leather seats nor a sunroof and so it says determine the probability of a model a car at a dealership having both heated leather seats and a sunroof okay so let's start by analyzing the situation and i always find it very helpful to draw a venn diagram however you might find it easiest just to use the equation I'm going to show you both. You figure out which method works for you. 
Okay, so let's start by drawing our Venn diagram. So we've got two events here. Um, the first is that a car has heated leather seats, and the second would be selecting um, a car that has a sunroof. So let's use H to represent the favorable outcomes for the event that their car has heated leather seats. And then we'll use S to represent the favorable outcomes for um, the second event, which is that the car has a sunroof included. Now we know from the question that there's a 43 three percent chance of a car having a heated leather seat overall so the probability of event h is 43 out of 100 and we know that there's a 36 percent chance that a car will have a sunroof so the probability of event s is 36 out of 100 and finally the probability that it has neither is 49 percent or 49 favorable outcomes out of 100. Now, um, we can use the fact that 49% have neither a sunroof or heated leather seats to help us figure out how many cars do have at least one of the heated leather seats or a sunroof. So this is similar to our first example. So we'll just take 100% of the cars and subtract the 49% that have neither to show that 51% of the cars have at least a sunroof or heated leather seats. So the probability of event H or heated leather seats or a sunroof is 51%. Now we can use our equation to help us determine the intersection, which is that the probability um, that a dealership will have a car that has both heated seats and a sunroof. So that would, in our equation, um, that would be P or the probability of H and S. So here's our equation for non-mutually exclusive events. And we've got 0.51 or 51%, we say at least have one or the other. We know that the overall probability of having heated leather seats is 0.43. The overall probability of having a sunroof is 0.36 or 36%. We can then simplify the right-hand side of our equation and finally solve for that intersection or the probability of having heated leather seats and a sunroof, which is 0.28 or 28%. So to summarize in this video, we started by talking about what it means to be non-mutually mutually exclusive and that these events can in fact occur simultaneously and that on a Venn diagram, these two sets would be intersecting, showing that there are favorable outcomes in common. And finally, we used our new equation that we could apply to determine the probability of A or B um, for non-mutually exclusive events um, and solved a few problems.